Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So it seems as if we may have come across a gold mine here with some recent data that came out yesterday. But also we may have discovered a problem at the same time, but it is technically a problem that we can solve. And that problem is the fact that the people that have not voted in the 2018, 2020, or 2022 elections, so the disaffected voters, those voters are breaking for Donald Trump by historic margins. And this also tells us that those who voted in 2018, 2020, and 2022 have broken heavily for Joe Biden by 11 points. Now, this also lends credence to the notion that Republicans had a problem in the midterms because a lot of Trump-only voters sat it out. It wasn't so much so that, oh, it's all Trump and the candidates and this, that, and the other thing. It's more that Trump exactly is a unique factor, and a lot of Republicans just don't have this ability to get these voters out and voting whether they align with Donald Trump or not, kind of like Obama. When Obama wasn't on the ballot, if he endorsed candidates in 2010 or 2014, didn't work out too well for him. But 2012, he was running up the totals, 2008, when he was on the ballot. And it's kind of the same thing here. Whereas if, you know, somebody that you're endorsing is not on the same ballot as you, they don't tend to do as well. And even we saw this in Ohio in the Senate primary where Trump's endorsee, vastly outperformed the polls. They had Bernie Moreno tied with Matt Dolan. He was trailing Dolan in some polls, and he ended up winning by 20 points. He outperformed vastly, partially because Donald Trump was on the ballot, and Donald Trump did go out there and endorse him. And there was that. But you look at this, and it shows that there is a problem with these voters who are not all that inclined to turn out every election cycle because, you know, Democrats can just bank on the electorate that's highly invested showing up most of the time, whereas Republicans a little bit different. And we're going to be talking about this and how can this problem be rectified, but also why is this actually a really good thing for 2024? But first, I have to tell you guys about our friends over at My Patriot Supply because it's been a while, but... Now we know that it's no longer a question of if something is coming, it's when. The only shock will be the what. So your gut, your instincts, the feeling you've had something ominous is on the way. All of it is true. But what are you going to do about it now while you still have some control? Your first step is going to my website, preparewithreadeagle.com. Your next step is stocking up on multiple one-week emergency food kits from My Patriot Supply. They are priced at just $49. There's no better time to buy in bulk. My Patriot Supply is equipped to help you prepare as the original Patriot company. They've helped over 2 million families ready themselves. These one-week kits with Ready Hour Foods provide over 2,000 calories every single day, and they're sealed inside a rugged ammo can, so they last up to 25 years in storage. So grab and go when the crisis comes. Get these kits for under $50 this week only at preparewithreadeagle.com. That is preparewithreadeagle.com because you can never be prepared enough. So this is absolutely huge. And it also might be showing why Donald Trump is doing so well among minority voters in the polling because black voters who did not vote in 2018, 2020, 2022 they show Donald Trump at 32% with that demographic. With Hispanics, he's essentially tied. And a lot of the new Hispanic voters that voted in 2020, a lot of them didn't vote in 2022, but those skewed towards Trump, whereas Hispanics that have been voting for multiple election cycles, well, Trump's doing better with them than previous Republicans. Biden still has a lead, but lower propensity Hispanics, a little bit different. Donald Trump and Joe Biden in a dead heat. And white voters as well. It's across all ethnicities. White working class voters tend to be the lowest propensity, the disaffected white voters. There's more of them than the other demographics. And Donald Trump is leading those voters 51 to 19, but you have to get them out and voting. You have to get them registered. And a lot of white disaffected voters did not turn out in 2018 or 2022. That's why Donald Trump is more competitive in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania 
than any one of these other Republicans. And it also proves that Donald Trump is indeed the most electable Republican candidate that you could have because he has this ability to inspire these disaffected voters. Because Democrats are going to be high turnout regardless in most places, and that we know. But when it comes down to it all, Republicans, they need their star power to match it. And Donald Trump being on the ballot, I really feel like is going to drive out a lot of these people in the zero and one category across all ethnic groups. And that is true. And it is something that is very good. And I think the voters you will likely see that voted in 2020 drop off are probably going to be people who voted for Biden. He had a very unstable coalition. So Republicans could really exploit this and turn out voters, find these voters, register these voters. The RNC, there's a new RNC in town. They're more competent. They should be able to do it. If they get these people out and voting, it could be an epic landslide. But if they drop the ball, it doesn't matter that Donald Trump is far better than Joe Biden on every single issue. If the results don't match the polls, you know, they drop the ball. Doesn't matter. But you're looking at this, and this is very good news for Donald Trump, so long as they're able to find these people, because Democrats are hitting a wall. They've already registered all the people they could find in the country. Now they're saying, we don't want to register voters. We don't want to register voters because young and minority voters who happen to not be registered are not exactly that pro-Democrat. So they're like worried about, do we even want to register the voters? And you talk about all that war chest that Biden has if getting out these people to vote, their get out the vote operation actually is in play, it might actually backfire among certain groups of people in certain instances, just based on the fact that if they're going to be registering voters, that they've hit a wall. And it's a big, big problem for them. That's why they're trying to go out there and indict Donald Trump. They're trying to essentially interfere in the election, tie him up in bogus cases, keep him in court, just so he's not able to go out there and campaign, but inadvertently, it's likely going to help him. And they have nothing to run on. We've already talked about that. There's no issues. They keep bleeding support, even Teamsters. This is a union, a very historically pro-Democrat union. They are donating to Republicans. They are donating to Republicans now. They are becoming more Republican-friendly. Union voters... You talk about Ohio, you talk about Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. Those are heavy union areas. That's why Democrats have been able to do so well in them. But that coalition is crumbling. You talk about what's going on right now in the economy. You talk about mass illegal immigration pouring into the country. It's definitely not something that has been historically good for unions either. If the unions are actually honest about themselves and care about their workers, they would, you know, obviously oppose Democrats at this point in the game, but they haven't been. But Teamsters, apparently, they might have had enough, and now they're contributing to Josh Hawley, who is uh, very much so one of the best, most conservative members in the Senate, but he does happen to be a little bit more pro-worker, not necessarily full-on pro-union, but they understand what's at stake here, and they understand their workers have had enough. So now they're starting to follow, at least in some cases, not all unions, we know that, the AFL-CIO, that's a disaster, but unions are shifting a little bit. These aren't necessarily your teachers' unions or your government unions. These are like the private unions, and they tend to be becoming more Republican-friendly as their workers become more Republican-friendly, which is huge when it comes down to the Rust Belt and those disaffected voters that we talk about here don't vote very often. A lot of them are factory workers, union workers, you name it. And if the pro-Democrat unions are shifting in terms of who they're supporting, that's going to help out a lot of Republicans because you have some single issue union voters who do happen to be more socially conservative. If they're going to be more open to voting for Donald Trump now, that is a brutal blow to Joe Biden, a brutal blow. And this has been happening for a while. You talk about the 
EV mandates for electric vehicles that is going to decimate the auto industry in Detroit. Donald Trump has capitalized on it. That's why he's polling so well in Michigan. It's not necessarily the Muslims in Dearborn or whatever. I'm not saying that it won't hurt him because people are disaffected about the whole Israel-Palestine thing in Dearborn. But still, a lot of that shift, why Donald Trump is doing so well, has more to do with the auto industry uh, in the state of Michigan, as well as the horrendous policies promoted by the joke of a governor there who is saying that she's going to incentivize people to house these people when they should be deported. That's basically it. It's ridiculous, but it's one of the reasons why Michigan is moving to the right. Democrats' Hail Mary and abortion may also be backfiring as well. Now, this is a right-leaning internal pollster, but it's the only poll we have on this so far in Arizona. And what does it exactly say? It says that the voters in the state of Arizona side with Donald Trump's abortion policy over Joe Biden's abortion policy by an 11-point margin. It is true that a lot of people did not approve of the court decision, but at the same time, you can look at this and you can see that the only people that said they've been paying a ridiculous amount of attention to the abortion ruling happen to be Democrats, and they'll probably try to get it on the ballot. It might boost, you know, hardcore liberal Democrat turnout, but is that enough in a state like Arizona to hand it to Biden single-handedly? Not necessarily. This poll is Donald Trump up in the state of Arizona by four percentage points. The border is a very, very big issue. And a lot of the people on the left who are not exactly big fans of that ruling are not big fans of the way that Biden has handled the conflict in the Middle East. And that is not something that helps Biden. So ultimately speaking, we can connect that back to this. And it's like even some of these higher propensity voters or voters who did vote in 2020 and may have voted in 2022 to a certain extent and may have voted in 2018, they're disaffected with this administration in some ways. And Biden will likely lose more support from the 2020 electorate then Donald Trump will lose from the 2020 electorate. That'd be enough to give Trump a win. We still have, you know, six and a half months to go. But, you know, some people have interpreted these numbers as these are good for Trump. Some have interpreted them as they're bad for Trump. I think because presidential elections tend to be higher turnout and there are a lot of people that are fed up with what's going on, the new voters will probably skew towards Trump and the voters who will likely drop off probably are going to be more likely to be Biden voters than Trump voters. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword for Biden that he's going to have to deal with. So that's why you see these trials going on. Who knows what the verdict's going to be? It just takes one juror to hang the jury and Donald Trump will be able to walk free. And that is very possible. I know the selection of the jury will likely be biased. I'm not saying it's a sure thing. But either way, it's ridiculous. It's just a big spectacle. And if they actually do convict him, I think it's going to help him as of right now. We'll see what happens. But every certain little legal thing they said would doom him has helped him. The goalposts keep moving. We'll see how far they move. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below. Comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.